Hi, it's Dan here. We're at the amazing Tahai Bay on Easter Island. And you can tell that because around about here is a moai. And he's one of my favorite moai so far because he's been fully restored. He's got his white eyes in and his big top knot. So he looks fantastic. Right behind him is some lovely cloud. There's still a bit of color in the sky. And in about 20 minutes over the horizon is going to come a giant full moon. I'm a little bit excited. Easter Island, full moon. Now, I want to show you something really awesome that's a feature of Olympus cameras. And that's something that's called live time. Live time is a wonderful feature that basically allows us to do bulb mode, but watch the image building on the back of the camera as the sensor is being exposed. Now, I, was, I always knew uh, that live time was a feature of Olympus cameras, but I've always used a remote that sits on top of the camera uh, and, and you, you control your exposure times and bits and pieces uh, by a remote. I still do use that sometimes, but I was stuck on an island once in Australia and I forgot my remotes and I needed to do long exposures for my light painting. And I remembered that the Olympus cameras had the live time feature. It saved my bacon and now I use it a lot because I think it's fantastic and I'll show you why. All right, so there are some things about live time I wanna to explain to you. The way that we get into it is we go through our exposure times. Uh, so we go past 10 seconds, 20 seconds, uh, all the way up to uh, through bulb mode and into live time. Now it's just before live composite. So if you get to live composite, you've gone too far. So you come back into live time. Now what's gonna happen is we press the shutter button and it just starts exposing. And we can see the image build on the back of the camera. But there is something we need to do before that. If you press the menu button, we come into the live time screen. And this allows us to set how frequently we see the image building. Now what I mean by that is, if I select two seconds in the menu, it means that every two seconds, I'm gonna to get to have a look at the image that we're building. Now, why do we need to think about that? Well, we get 24 chances to take a look at it. So if you're doing a two minute exposure and you select two second intervals to look at your image, 24 times is gonna go past pretty quick. And then we're just guessing what we're gonna see. So you do need to have a bit of an idea of how long your exposure is gonna be. Something to think about. If we do happen to go into higher ISO settings, like 4.8 or 1600, it reduces the amount of times we get to review the image. Um, so we're only going to be going for, uh, whoops. So we're going to be in a low ISO setting. So uh, we get to see the image 24 times. Now looking out at this scene behind me, I reckon I'm probably going to be going for about two minutes or so. So I want to take a look at my exposure every eight to 15 seconds. So to start with, I'm going to go to eight seconds. So I press okay to lock eight seconds into that screen. We're at F4, let's go. I've pressed the shutter button. Let's see what our first reveal shows us. All right, so we can see something, which is great. Now down the bottom left-hand side of the... So down the bottom left-hand corner, you've got your histogram. And this is fantastic because what it allows us to do is ensure that at no stage do we actually overexpose. If you're not sure about a bright part of the sky or the clouds or bits and pieces, uh, it, it's, a, it's a great safety net. So we've had four of our reveals and we're starting to see the clouds. We're getting beautiful movement in the cloud. There's stunning white clouds in there and gray clouds, which is beautiful. It's always nice to have that contrast up in the sky. We can see the grass down in front of the moai and we can see the moai. Look at his eyes. This is a beautiful, this is a beautiful one. He's been fully restored. Not many of them on the island have their eyes, but this guy's great. I don't think they realize uh, but he's looking really good. Okay, so we're starting to get a really nice exposure here. We're over a minute now, and it's looking good. Now, in a little while, we're gonna get a full moon. I can see it now coming up over the horizon, and what's gonna happen then is uh, everything will change. It's gonna become a very bright scene. That's looking incredible now. We're nearly at a minute and a half. So I kind of guessed my eight second reveal is really well here uh, because by the time we get to about three minutes, which is like where I think we want to be, 
uh, will be near our 24. Now lifetime doesn't just need to be, so lifetime's not just for at night, you know. This scene here, uh, in the middle of the day, you can imagine if you had some serious ND filters on the front of your lens, you would still get beautiful movement in the clouds, you'd still get the lovely soft sea. It would be wonderful. Okay, look, I'm nearly, I'm nearly happy with that. Um, yeah, it's got everything I want. Bit of foreground, you know, I'll crop some of that stuff out anyway. So what we'll do is we'll shut it there. So we're at two minutes and 20 seconds. Um, so there we go. I press the shutter button and it ends the uh, live time. So let's take a look. So I press play. And let's take a look at what we got. Okay, let's zoom in. Oh, look at our mate there. He's looking super sharp. You can see his eyes just fine. Look at that. Lovely movement in the clouds behind. The water is really soft. He looks fantastic. Super happy about that. Okay, so we're back in our live time uh, tutorial. Now, you're going to have to take my word that right behind me here is a beautiful moai. It is absolutely pitch black. But something very exciting is about to happen. Just up behind me is the full moon. So we've got a full moon on Easter weekend on Easter Island with a moai and I'm about to show you how we can capture this incredible image using live time. All right, so we've got a scene. I've positioned the moai quite hard on the left here. I'm gonna change that a bit. We wanna bring him around. That's better. But for reasons that will become all too apparent, I've really got a heap of sky in my shot because there's some amazing cloud, white cloud. There's a whole lot of stars. So I'm on live time. Uh, I'm going to check my reveals. Eight seconds. So we're still taking a look at our exposures every eight seconds, which is good. Let's start there. Okay out of that. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I want you to see this as it's building in real time. So I'm gonna bring that camera in and we'll take a look. But here we are, Easter Island, Moai, cloud, and very shortly, a big ass moon. And you wait until you see what that does to our images. All right, let's go. So you can see on the screen there, uh, I've got everything framed up how I want. I've got the Moai at the bottom left, uh, and I've got the clouds up the top. Now we're still at F4. So I'm just going to, let's get into it. So I'm just going to press the shutter button. Uh, we're still at eight second reveals. So let's take a look at what we get with our first one. And by all accounts, it should be pretty stunning. We've got all the elements there. Okay, we've got a bit of sky. I can see the clouds. Because what I'm trying to achieve is movement in the clouds. Uh, and so, you know, we want to go normally, normally on a still night like this, we'd probably want to be going for a solid you know, minute or two minutes. Um, the moon is up behind the clouds, so that's going to be pretty amazing when, yeah, look at that. We can already see some movement in the cloud. I've got my histogram down here on the left. And I've moved down a little closer to the Moai as well. There were crowds of people here um, earlier and I was just trying to avoid them. So we were using a zoom lens over the top of the crowd. Uh, but of course the wonderful thing about doing long exposure photography at night is that uh, those people disappear pretty quick. Now here's an interesting thing that I often think about. You know, it's tempting to open right up. This is this is a, a, an f1.2 lens. It's tempting to go wide open at f1.2. Uh, and the reason that is tempting is because things happen a lot faster. Well, the problem is, is that you don't get that sort of length of time feeling that you get with cloud movement. And, you know, in theory, we should get a little bit of star trail in this as well as the image is building. 
One thing that will happen though, in a few minutes when that moon comes out, uh, is things are going to be very, very bright because it's a full moon. Looking good, I can see, yeah, lots of cloud movement. Now again, as you can see, we're at about two and a half minutes here. We're at about two and a half minutes and we've used 17 of our 24 reveals. So that's pretty good. I gauged that pretty well. The foreground is getting pretty bright now. It's looking great. I'm really happy with that. The white clouds on the horizon are showing up really beautifully. You know, for me, we're nearly there. We'll leave it going for a little bit. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Look, we're at three minutes, which is really good. That'll all change when the moon comes out. So let's take a look. So I'll press the shutter button. All right, there we go. So I'm just gonna press play. And let's go in and take a bit of a look at what we've got. Some nice star trails. I just wanna make sure he's sharp. Sharp as attack. Look at his eyes, that's great. So he's looking good. Plenty of movement in the clouds. We can see the foreground, that's all in focus. All right, I'm super happy with that. Nice sort of creamy sort of a look to the cloud. Love it, absolutely love it. And let's go the other way. Let's take our, let's take our f-stop all the way down to 1.8. Bloody 1.2, let's see what happens. And this is a really good, this gives you a really good example of why we don't want to be at 15 seconds for our reveals. You watch this. So 15 seconds from now at f1.2, it's going to be very bright. All right, look at that. Our very first reveal. at f1.2 and it's lit up like a Christmas tree. Whoa, okay, so at 30 seconds, that's way over. You watch the next one, it's gonna go way too bright, probably at 45 seconds, you watch this, boom. All right, and we gotta stop it right there. <laughs> that's awesome. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's really, really exposed brightly. But it's still pretty cool though. I quite like that. All right, so let's do this. So we kind of need to go, you know, kind of need to go, uh, let's go to F1.8. All right, but it means we need to change our reveals. So let's go down to two seconds and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Two seconds, boom. Yeah, that's great. So at F1.8, things are happening pretty quick. Looking good, the clouds look amazing. And of course, because the moon, because the moon is out, the sky's looking pretty blue. Yeah, that looks great. And the neat thing is, you know, we can see the histogram. We can see the histogram is starting to sort of creep over to the right. So no chance of us being overexposed because we'll catch it. Okay, so we've used up our 24. So we don't, so because our 24 seconds is gone, we don't get any more reveals. So we're guessing, and I know that if I stop that now at one minute, boom, look at that. So we certainly didn't, we certainly didn't want to go any more than that. It looks great, bit of star trails. Everything is absolutely tack sharp. That looks awesome. All right, so that's lifetime. A great feature of the Olympus cameras 
takes all of the guesswork out of long exposure photography. You can throw those remotes away almost. You don't just have to do it at night like I do. During the day is great around soft water, all of those wonderful things. If you have an Olympus camera, switch into lifetime, have a play. You'll absolutely love it.